Good morning. I want to welcome you to this historic day at Taylor University. Whether you walked from your dorm room or you journeyed across the country to be here, we are so glad that you have joined us. Psalm 105 tells us to give thanks to the Lord, to call upon his name and to make his deeds known among the people. And that is exactly what we are going to do here today. We're going to give thanks for God's faithfulness over 125 years. We're going to call upon his name and ask for his blessing over Dr. Michael Lindsay, his family, and our entire Taylor community as we begin this new season. And finally, we are committed that we will boldly make God's deeds known and we will give him the glory. So let's open our time in prayer together. God, we come to you today with humble hearts and with open hands. We are in this place because of your work over many generations. We thank you for the ways you have led and guided this university. We thank you for the ways you have used servant leaders who have carried the mantle of leadership in the past. We know, God, that you will be faithful in this new season, and we give this day to you. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. President Lindsay, it's an honor to bring greetings on behalf of institutions of higher education who explicitly advance the cause of Christ as part of their mission. I also bring greetings as the father of a Taylor graduate and as your friend. In your recent book, Hinge Moments, Making the Most of Life's Transition, based on your 10-year study of 550 platinum leaders, you note that there are moments in time when we open a door or close a door of opportunity that results in life change that is significant. The journey that you, Rebecca, and your daughters have been on in the past year is such a hinge moment. You closed one door, walked through another, and have been warmly welcomed by the Taylor University community. But what unfolds over the next years remains to be seen. But we know that this moment is important for you and for this community. I am prepared to stipulate that you are one of our key leaders in Christian higher education. And we find ourselves at one of the most challenging times in our history. Christian higher education is, in fact, at a hinge moment. Historic biblical values embraced not only by Christians, but also by the world's great monotheistic religions are no longer embraced by the longer, larger culture. Population shifts in areas of the country where many of our universities are found tell us that the pipeline of traditional students is running low. The significant economic value of a college degree is under media scrutiny and debate. The financial model under which we've operated for decades no longer seems viable and civil discourse, which is absolutely essential to a liberal arts education, seems a thing of the past. Is the door hinged on our movement closing, or is there an open door that today's leaders must forge through? What is the meaning of this hinge moment for Christian higher education and for Taylor University as one of the flagship universities in our movement? Not once, but twice, you have stepped into university leadership. In ways not unlike Esther of the Hebrew Scriptures, you have been called forward for such a time as this. You put your intellect, your knowledge of and practice of leadership, your team building skills, your amazing connecting skills, and your deep faith in God on the altar for such a time as this. Taylor University needs your best. Christian higher education needs your best. The advancement of God's agenda in the world needs you and Taylor University to be successful. So on behalf of my colleagues in Christ-centered higher education, I say we stand with you today. We bring not only our greetings, we bring our commitment to journey with you and to surround you with prayer. If ever Lux and Fides light and faith were needed, they are needed now. May God bless you as you lead Taylor University and our movement into the future.
It is such an honor to bring greetings on behalf of the ACSI, Association of Christian Schools International, our 20,000 plus schools around this globe and representing the global Christian school and global church. Our board of trustees, our global staff, we, we salute, congratulate, not just Dr. Lindsay, but Taylor University for getting such a fine, exemplary leader. I can testify on behalf of the global church, the global body of Christ followers, has been influenced by Taylor University's global footprint. And as many, as many of you know, Dr. Lindsay has a tremendous influence on a global level. And if you don't know that, you will soon find that out. If I had to select one scripture that I think this global community would attribute to Dr. Michael Lindsay, it would be Proverbs 22.1. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Dr. Lindsay's name is good. And God's word says it's good and even better than all the gold and silver that we could even put in this fine auditorium. A good name is not earned in a few days, a few weeks, or a few months. It's the result of years and years of a steadfast, consistent, and biblically-based root system of living out his faith each and every day, living a life of Christ-like humility, prudence, and resolve. That is Dr. Lindsay. Indeed, this is a very special blend of virtues, of character traits. But what sets Dr. Lindsay apart from others is that he has the ability to replicate this root system, this blend of virtues, these Christ-centered principles in other individuals and, yes, even in organizations. I have witnessed this. His selfless and servant leadership has had a substantial impact on me and thousands of people he is around and the organizations that he leads. With Dr. Lindsay, there, is no, there are no shortcuts to excellence. Roots take time to grow, but I will tell you, he will accelerate the root system just with his work ethic and steadfast spirit. God bless you, Taylor University faculty and staff, Dr. Lindsay and administration students and alumni, and the students that populate our early ed through 12th grade around the globe need you more than ever to protect and grow biblically-based root system as together we train a generation of Daniels and Esthers. Good morning, I'm David Wants. I am the president of the Independent Colleges of Indiana, an association of 29 regionally accredited private, private institutions. I've spent 40 years in higher education. I know Taylor University very well, and I would say as well, you have chosen well, and this is a time that you have been called to. There are forces in higher education and in the world that would work us woe. The job of the independent colleges of Indiana is to advocate for our colleges so that they may be free to live out their missions to their faculty, their staff, their students, and their community. And in Taylor University's case, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. To that we will be faithful. And so, sir, on behalf of your 28 other presidential colleagues, I bring you our greetings and our heartiest welcome. Good morning. My name is Ann Vermillion, and I am state representative in the Indiana General Assembly. Newly announced that I will be the voice of Upland and Taylor University, and that makes me very happy. Um, but more poignantly today, I am here on behalf of our state governor, uh, Eric Holcomb. And today, I would like to read a proclamation uh, that for Taylor University. 
President, would you like to come up and you can stand here and then I'll, Thank I you. have to read it though. Thank you. So, all right. To all whom the, these presents may come, greetings. Whereas in 1846 has stayed true to its heritage of faith learning integration and challenging students to honor God by giving their best in every area of life. And whereas Taylor began as Fort Wayne Female College, founded by the Methodist Episcopals and became Fort Wayne College when men were admitted. And whereas the college merged with the Fort Wayne College of Medicine and changed its name to Taylor University after Methodist Bishop William Taylor, an American missionary. And in 1893, Taylor moved to Upland, Indiana. And whereas Taylor has been recognized 25 consecutive years, 13 as number one, as the top regional institution by the US News and World Report. And whereas Taylor is the oldest non-denomination school, non-denominational school and the Council for Christian Colleges and Universities. And whereas graduates of Taylor University number nearly 26,000. So now, therefore, I, Eric J. Holcomb, the governor of the state of Indiana, here do I proclaim today, October 8th, 2021, as the 175th anniversary of Taylor University. And in the state of Indiana, and all citizens should duly note this occasion. Good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Taylor University, my new home. Thank you. Michael and I and our three daughters, Elizabeth, Caroline, and Emily, are so excited to be here with you today. We are thrilled to have so many special guests, including our family with us. We have my parents and Michael's parents coming from Mississippi and Texas, my brother and his family, and many special aunts and uncles and cousins. So thank you all for coming. You honor us with your presence. Ten weeks ago, my family and I moved to Upland and into Musselman House here on campus. We have been so warmly welcomed and embraced. We thank you. So many of you have been praying for us, and we feel those prayers, and we're so grateful. Thank you. Taylor is a very special place. We feel called, and we feel blessed to be here. It's really great to be, and to be a part of such an outstanding and Christ-honoring institution. In just a moment, I'd like to say a word of prayer and thank God for this special day and this new chapter, but, um, and then my daughters will come up and read some scripture for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this special day in Taylor's 175th year. Thank you for the men and women who have served over the years to make Taylor an outstanding leader in Christian higher education. Thank you, Lord, for the men and women who have been blessed by the professors, administrators, staff, and students for these many, many years. The world is different and better because of Taylor graduates. May today's inauguration remind us of our treasured history and our commitment to Christ. Lord, we pray for Michael. You would give him the wisdom of Solomon and the strength of Samson to do the heavy lifting required by such a role. May the Holy Spirit guide him in all that he does. Lord, we dedicate this day your servant Michael to you. Bless, strengthen, and protect him as he leads Taylor. Amen. Psalm 37, 3 through 6. Trust in the Lord and do good. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit the, your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. 
You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Thank you, ladies. That was beautiful. Good morning, Taylor friends. It's a real pleasure to be here today and to give a quick charge to your new president, my friend, Dr. Michael Lindsay. I've had the privilege of knowing Dr. Lindsay and his family across many years, many seasons of life. I've probably known him longer than anyone on the platform today, including his wonderful wife, Rebecca. I've prayed with Dr. Lindsay. I have watched him walk throughout his life, his career, make professional decisions and life-altering decisions. And I can tell you, Taylor friends, that President Lindsay is a man of remarkable and uncompromising consistency and dedication. Friends, you're fortunate to have a president that has multiple gifts. I know you're already discovering that, but they're all tempered and honed with a pastor's heart, an entrepreneurial CEO's passion, a scholar's attention to detail, and nuance. And he comes to you with the experience of leading universities and other businesses across this country. He brings to you passion, giftedness, and experience. There's so many gifts that President Lindsay has that I couldn't begin to, to list them all and talk with you about each of them. So I've listed them under three categories. President Lindsay has vision, he has vitality, and he has a voice. From the time I first met Michael Lindsay as a teenager, he always began with the end in mind, to borrow from Stephen Covey. No matter what event, no matter what decision, no matter what was before him, he always began with the end in mind, putting together a vision and a strategy to reach that goal. Taylor friends, Dr. Lindsay will listen to you. He will listen to colleagues across the nation, and he will bring best, best practices and a few novel ideas, I suspect, uh, to this university. And you will know soon, if you not, don't know already, that you have chosen well. You bring vision to whatever task is before you, Dr. Lindsay. And you bring vitality and energy, the gift of physical energy and vitality. Since I first met Dr. Lindsay, he was always like a sponge, eager, anxious, energized to learn about whatever task was before him. Dr. Lindsay, your intellectual curiosity and your scholarly achievements have and will continue to serve you well as you lead this community of scholars and students. But as you know, leading a, a modern university is about far more than being a scholar. It takes lots of energy. It was four-star Admiral William McRaven on his way out as the chancellor of the University of Texas system that commented that leading a college in today's world is the hardest job in the nation. The job is so multifaceted, it requires energy and endurance and vitality and your vitality has always been recognized by others. I got permission from Dr. Lindsay to tell a quick story uh, that relates to this matter of vitality and vision. Even as a teenager, his peers would call on him anytime there was a task, a program, a job, something that seemed beyond them, to come into the place and to bring some organization, to bring some vision, and to bring some energy to the matter. Now, I understand that there have already been some purple and white Nikes distributed around campus, so you know a little bit about the energy and vitality needed, but his friends affectionately, and I do mean affectionately, because he had this gift of visioning and strategy and making things come together, they referred to him as whirlwind because it was always an energetic experience to bring in 
then Michael Lindsay to a situation. He would bring energy and vitality, just as he will bring energy and vitality to Taylor. Friends, you've chosen well. He has the energy. He has the vision. And President Lindsay, you have a clear voice in a world of static and double speak. You have a well-rounded, clear, unequivocal, and articulable commitment to Christian higher education. Your words, both written and written, are backed by experience, research, prayerful consideration, and sanctified common sense. Taylor, you have chosen well. Dr. Lindsay has the vision, the vitality, and the voice to lead this university into the next 175 years. Godspeed to you, my brother. Good morning, friends. It's a privilege as your near neighbor just down the road to share greetings today. In his recent book, Brave by Faith, Alistair Begg wrote this arresting line, what the world most needs from the church is our gospel, not our approval. Friends, I believe our society and our world stand today at one of those crossroads to which the events of history sometimes bring us. It is clear that our future will not simply be a continuation of our past, but it is unclear what values, what non-negotiable truths will define our way forward as a society and as a nation. There was a time when our nation could affirm we hold these truths to be self-evident. That time increasingly is a distant memory. A crossroads is not a campground. It's a place of choosing. It's a place of discernment to mark out a pathway into the future. And what role will a Christ-centered university such as Taylor University and my institution, Indiana Western University, play in this defining moment? If we have anything of transformational value to offer, I am convinced that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, offered through the rigorous discipline exposition of truth, through the academic and co-curricular disciplines of our universities. More precisely, I believe what is most needed today is the evangelization of our collective imagination. We need imaginations awakened to the grandeur, hope, and beauty of a new life that begins in the fear of God and a right understanding of God's creation. The most radical thing about Taylor University is not its stance on any particular social issue. It is the belief that the Creator God took on flesh and moved among us, died and rose again to be the propitiation for the world's sin, and is the one way for the world to be saved. This is the beautiful, life-transforming, world-shaping truth that lies at the heart of your Christ-centered university. Jesus is the most compelling figure in history. Faith in Jesus Christ has furnished the world with the presuppositional foundations for scientific knowledge, the emotional and spiritual energy behind much of the world's artistic beauty, and anchors a basis for shared morality. This is not merely subjective opinion. It is the truth that forms the basis of the narrative that Taylor and all of our Christ Center universities exist to offer the world. President Lindsay, you have proven yourself to be a leader whose heart is steadfastly committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ, whose wise Christ centered leadership has been tested in the crucible of difficult choices and whose credentials as a Christian scholar are impeccable. As your colleague in this sacred work, as a highly interested neighbor whose respect for Taylor University is immense, and as your friend, 
I charge you to carry forward this good news ministry in the fear of God, surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, faithful in season and out, courageous in times of battle, gentle in times of correction, joyful in times of celebration. And I pledge to you today the enduring respect, generous assistance, prayerful support, and genuine friendship of your neighbors at Indiana Wesleyan University. God bless you, and God bless Taylor University. I have a personal word of encouragement to both you and Rebecca. Michael and Rebecca, as a friend and co-worker in Christian higher education, my prayer for you is that you will practice the spiritual gift of remembering. In particular, it's my prayer that you will remember how beloved you are of God. You are both so good at what God has called you to be. And it said that God really took a chance making competent people. And it's because the enemy uses that competence to cause us to forget that we need God hour by hour. Now, this happens to me especially when things are going well. And then when things don't go as planned as life doesn't, the enemy uses disappointment to cause us to think that we are not competent, but in fact worthless. When the Bible uses the word beloved, it connotes deep affection. God loved Jesus perfectly and abundantly. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Imagine hearing that. And you, Rebecca and Michael, are adopted into God's family through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and therefore beloved by the Father. It's an amazing, lavish love. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. Michael and Rebecca, as you begin this beautiful new chapter with these wonderful new people. Love them as the Father has loved you, always remembering you are first and always a couple beloved by God. We gather today to install D. Michael Lindsay as the next president of Taylor University. For 175 years, Taylor has been guided by faithful men and women who have been dedicated to the integration of biblical faith and learning. And today, we begin a new chapter in Taylor's ongoing commitment to the important and noble mission of developing servant leaders marked with a passion to minister Christ's redemptive love and truth to a world in need. At critical junctures in Taylor's history, God has brought us leaders whose unique abilities match the needs of the university at that point in time, and it has happened once again. Michael, you have already proven to be a leader in this season. and to handle the challenges and opportunities this new era brings to us. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to affirm our great delight in you and Rebecca and the family joining us at this time. We publicly affirm our confidence in your leadership of the presidency, the administration, the faculty, the staff, and the student body. So President Lindsay, we now present you with the university's symbols of authority, the mace, the Bible, 
and the Presidential Medallion and invite the campus community to join us in this lit of investiture and dedication. Would all faculty, staff, and students please stand as we read together. As a campus, campus community, we, we commit, commit to pray for President Lindsay and his administration that his leadership will be distinguished by godly wisdom, care and concern for others, and an unwavering commitment to our Christian convictions. We will partner with President Lindsay for the advance of the gospel and the ministry of Taylor University as our hearts and lives embrace the process of maturing in Christ as a community. You may be seated. Taylor University students, please rise. Join me in reading this prayer. As students of Taylor University, at this historic moment of institutional significance, we pledge to support President Lindsay and his administration in building a campus community that is characterized by truth and love. We commit to being a community that honors God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. You may be seated. Faculty colleagues, will you please rise and read with me? And as teachers, scholars, and mentors, we will work with President Lindsay in shaping the lives of our students that they may study to show themselves approved unto God as workers who have no need to be ashamed, but who accurately impart the word of truth. Today, we renew our commitment to an education grounded in the liberal arts and that is biblically anchored, whole person focused, and Christ-centered for the glory of God. The mace used today, the third in a line of simple, unadorned walking sticks used over the years as symbols of authority of the university president, belonged to Bishop William Taylor, noted Methodist missionary for whom the university is named. His African walking stick prominently displayed at important university convocations is for all related to Taylor University, past and, pre past and future generations, a precious symbol. We treasure it as a personal possession of Bishop William Taylor, cut by him from a thorny tree in Africa and used in his extended apostolic journeys. It reminds us of the campaigner for Christ, the apostle to all continents, the undaunted herald to all peoples of the earth of eternal salvation in Christ. We cherish it as a scepter, a symbol of authority conferred to Bishop Taylor by his Lord and master. As such, President Lindsay, we present and entrust it to you as our leader for this next season. This symbol of authority is accompanied by our fervent prayers for an even greater university and for you as president of Taylor University. As you carry it, may you be reminded that leading in the way of Jesus is like shepherding a flock. You are called to guide our community with a discerning heart and to balance strength with tenderness and conviction with openness. May you lead like Jesus. Dr. Lindsay, we next present to you with a Bible. It's God's eternal living word. This Bible, which also belonged to Bishop William Taylor, was presented to him in 1848 when he was only 28 years old. It, it is believed to have traveled with him around Cape Horn as he sailed from the eastern seaboard to California, arriving a year before the territory joined the Union. Over the next seven years, before beginning his missionary journeys ab abroad, 
He gave himself eloquent and forceful street preaching and vigorous good words, and the Bible was his constant source of and foundation. May the Bible be your anchor, and it may always be our anchor. And may your personal and daily engagement with the Word of God shape your presidency. We believe the Bible is the inspire and authoritative Word of God, and it provides essential teachings and principles for personal and community conduct. May God's Word be a constant source of guidance and encouragement for you and your leadership as you follow the example of David in Psalm 78, where it says that he shepherded the people with integrity of heart and with skillful hands he led them. Would Taylor staff please rise as we read together. As colleagues across campus, we will partner with President Lindsay to ensure that our students experience an education that engages the world and motivates them even further to servant leadership. We will integrate faith and learning in all of our interactions with students, helping them enjoy the lessons and blessings that come from Christians who experience life together. And finally, we'll present you with the President's Medallion. This is a seal, a symbolic representation of the university's mission. There are five components to the medallion. The, the three rings, they represent the triune God. The shield represents the biblical armor of God. The torch, the torch of learning, the cross and the crucible, and the world represent Taylor's time-honored attributes of relentless discovery, intentional community, and global engagement. Lose that fetus, light, and faith. is symbolic of Taylor's historic belief that all truth is God's truth, and that we are called to bear the light of Christ as we carry forth our faith in the world around us. Further, the circular design illustrates our effort to reach every corner of the world with love and truth, with light and faith. The medallion is the official badge of the presidency of Taylor University and is worn by the president when participating in formal university ceremonies such as commencement and other academic gatherings. Each time you don this symbol of your office, in the years ahead may be remind you of this holy moment and rededicate yourself anew to helping Taylor University stay true to its mission. May God bless you. Que Dios te bendiga. Upon the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and in the presence of these witnesses, Michael, I would like to inquire of you of your intentions. Do you promise to uphold the distinctive Christian mission and purpose, as well as the culture and traditions that distinguish Taylor University? I do. Do you promise to lead the institution according to the biblical principles set forth in God's word and in alignment with our foundational documents? I do. Do you promise to encourage an atmosphere of academic inquiry and intellectual endeavor that will challenge and motivate students to reach their full potential? I do. Do you promise to continue to nurture and develop the Taylor University family of alumni, parents, and friends? I do. Do you promise to follow the principles of wise stewardship that will enable the institution to remain financially strong and reputationally in good standing? I do. Finally, do you promise to lead the institution in ways that will continue its position as one of the nation's leading institutions of Christ-centered higher education? I do. President D. Michael Lindsay, it is my pleasure to invest you with the Presidential Medallion as a symbol of your office position 
and responsibilities. In the presence of this assembly and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I congratulate you on being named the president of Taylor University with all the rights, responsibilities, and privileges therein. As a board, we pledge to you our counsel, support, and prayers as we partner together in the advancement of the cause of Christ through the mission of Taylor University. May God bless you and your good service as Taylor's president. Michael is a symbol of the spiritual authority now that is coming from high. We would like to have a prayer of investiture and invite the former presidents of Taylor University and Rebecca to come. They'll lay hands on you and um, just bless you and commit to pray for you. For those of you in the audience, if you want to put your hand out in a way to symbolize your leading and your leaning and um, love for him or open your hands in some way. Let's just all um, humble ourselves before the Lord at this sacred moment. Thank you. Let's pray. Beloved Father, King of creation, beloved Jesus, light of the world, and beloved Holy Spirit who indwells us with your presence and with the same power that raised Christ from the dead. God, we honor you, Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding this institution for 175 years and for continuing to provide faithful leadership in the office of the president. Thank you, Lord, for all the presidents, former ones that stand up here that now are transferring once again their love, their leadership, and their, and their spiritual authority to Michael and Rebecca. God, thank you for Michael's vision, for his energy, for his desire to see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for Rebecca, for Elizabeth, Emily, and Caroline, we really have a presidential family, and we bless them in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for their physical health, their mental strength, their emotional wellness, for all that it takes to be God's people in this time of need for such a time as this. So God, we ask that you would be true to your word, that the steps of the righteous ones are ordered by God. Order his days, order their lives as a family, order every connection that he has with another human being and endow him with every fruit of the spirit and gift of the spirit necessary to be that light of the world for you, that light and increase his faith, God every day. We love you, Lord. We humbly commit once again as faculty, staff, students to your Lord serving together, to sacrificing, and to seeing your love, light, and faith permeate this dark world. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, Rebecca and I want to thank you for this amazing opportunity to board chair Chris Gagline and the entire board of trustees and the search committee that called us to this place. Thank you so much for entrusting us to this noble and worthy endeavor. We're honored and excited to join you. To my extraordinary faculty and staff colleagues, we are so excited to be a part of this community. Thank you for warmly welcoming our entire family. We're thrilled to not only be your colleagues, but also your neighbors and your friends. We look forward to doing all that we can to bless and serve you in the days ahead. To our amazing students, thank you for making Taylor such a remarkable place. You are the reason that we are here. And we are so grateful for the opportunity to come and be part of this amazing campus community. And to my presidential colleagues, thank you so much for being faithful stewards in this noble calling. David, 
Jean, Lowell, and Paige. It's a privilege to pick up the baton from you. I also want to recognize uh, Janie Kessler, wife of our beloved Jay Kessler, who couldn't be with us here in person today, but surely is with us here in spirit. Jane, Janie set an example of faithfulness for all of us to live up to. Janie, we're so honored to have you here and trust that you will give Jay our love and our thanks. The title of my inaugural address today is taken from the Latin phrase that appears on the Taylor University seal, lux et fides, which means light and faith. Rebecca and I met in an upper level Latin class during our undergraduate days. So while some might claim that French is the language of love for us, it is Latin. I actually got my first interest. I actually got my first interest in teaching as a profession, not actually from my English classes as an undergrad or from my uh, biblical studies or theology classes in seminary or my experience in sociology for my doctoral work. No, actually, it all began tutoring high school Latin at the independent school where my mom served as head of school, a wonderful place called Jackson Prep in Jackson, Mississippi. Latin is a remarkable language. Knowing something about the subject is almost a requirement for somebody who wants a fulsome liberal arts education. After all, linguists estimate 80% of the entries in the English dictionary came to us through another language with Latin being the most prominent. In fact, about 10% of the Latin vocabulary has made its way directly into English, which is why Latin is so very helpful for folks who wanna strengthen their English vocabulary or understand the underlying grammar of our linguistic system. So lux et fides is fundamental to understanding Taylor University, just as light and faith is fundamental to understanding our community. There are hundreds of references in the Bible to light. Two of my favorite come from the passages that Emily and Caroline read earlier. From the light that God speaks into existence on the first day of creation to the very last chapter in the Bible, in the book of Revelation chapter 21, where the new Jerusalem will shine with the glory of God. The Bible is replete with light from cover to cover. Light's an amazing gift because not only do we see it as we do when we gaze at the remarkable hues of red, orange, and purple in the Indiana sunset, but light is also remarkable because through it, we see everything else, as C.S. Lewis would remind us. The human eye is a marvel of God's handiwork. One area of the Lord's intricate design is how the human brain actually translates light into color. When we see the special Pantone of color that's known around here as the Taylor purple, it's not so much that we're seeing purple per se, but instead we see a reflection of certain shades of light and absorption of other shades of light that produces a unique combination that our brains associate with what you and I have come to associate with the royal shade of purple. You see, our eyes are filled with millions of these light-sensitive cells called rods and cones. Cone cells actually help us to detect color. Fully 20% of the human brain is focused on helping us make sense of the visual world. It was Sir Isaac Newton who first gave to us the mnemonic that we learned as little kids to understand the different colors of the visible visual spectrum, Roy G. Briv. Do you remember that? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. The extraordinary thing is that the visible colors are just a tiny fraction of the entire light spectrum that exists. When you stop to realize just how fundamental light is to the human existence, it's perhaps not surprising that on the first day, God decided, let there be light. And from that, so many other things have become possible, from photosynthesis that we see in plants to optical networking technology that we've seen developed. Bell Laboratories in New Jersey has a sign that says, welcome to Photon Valley, because of the seemingly endless possibilities, the bandwidth that's found in light beam that can be used for thousands of purposes. Researchers now believe that it's possible in the future, every person on the planet could have his or her own unique wavelength such that we might be able to communicate with our friends in Sao Paulo or in Beijing through our own personalized 
network or channel using optical networking. It's really mind-boggling to think about all the possibilities. And yet, humans have been thinking about light since the days of Genesis. At Taylor, we are inspired by light and united in faith. The Taylor Seal brings these two together because in many ways, they're complementary and reinforcing. As a vibrant community of faith, this is a place that celebrates the light of Jesus Christ that we see evident all around us. Just as the Bible has hundreds of references to light when it's talking about God and the faithful people, so also we believe here at Taylor Part of our value is reflecting the sun, S-O-N, in how we experience life together. Through our covenantal commitments, we endeavor to bear witness to the light and faith of Jesus Christ and to see both grow in our lives. Over recent months, I've spent a good bit of time trying to get to know Taylor a little bit better, reading through our archives, talking with a variety of people and experiencing our legendary campus culture. I got to hang out in Sammy Morris. (laughs) My people, the KSAC and the Dining Commons. I've watched our faculty in action with admiration as they teach and mentor our students all around campus. The net result of that is that I've concluded for 175 years, Taylor has done a few things extraordinarily well by bringing together light and faith. In at least three distinct ways, I think we have seen how individually and collectively we have a part to play and also God has an important part to play, helping us become servant leaders who are prepared to minister to a world in need. For starters, we bear the light and God ignites the faith. Make no mistake, this is a Christ-centered institution, one of only a handful of ranked institutions in the United States where every student, faculty, and staff member is a professing Christian. We do this because we believe at root, we're called to help the next generation grow and deepen in their Christian faith. And we've come to understand faith grows the best in the context of wider faith. Anyone who's been here realizes this is a place of great intentionality. Virtually everything we do is on purpose. From the ways we organize residence life, to how we facilitate student learning through high impact practices. The data shows that Taylor does this extremely well. In survey after survey, Taylor seniors report higher levels of participation than their peers at other institutions in everything from research projects with faculty to university brokered internships, to study abroad programs, to culminating senior projects. We consistently score very well. Again and again, our alumni talk about the amazing transformation that occurred for them during their season here on campus. They talk about how they were able to bear the light of Christ to one another in discipleship, small groups, over Chick-fil-A meals in the Boren Center, in seminar discussions, and in chapel services. As we bear the light of Christ to one another, God has a way of igniting our faith in much the same way that we stoke the embers of a fire to warm a home or to cast a brighter light. There is indeed a real warmth to this place that's attractive and compelling. It's why Taylor students are more likely than their peers to say that they belong when they come here. In fact, I think that this is a place where you belong even before you arrive. Students, alumni, parents all praise the fact that Taylor is a place where campus staff are caring and helpful, where our faculty attend to students as individuals, where our students feel safe and secure so that they can stretch and grow, and where there is a shared commitment to genuine academic excellence and Christ-centered higher education. This has been a place of warmth and encouragement for a very long time. A librarian prince named Sammy Morris came to study at Taylor back in 1891 after he he encountered a Taylor alumnus who was serving God as a missionary in Africa. Seeing much promise in the life of Sammy, this Taylor alum encouraged him to pursue higher education in the US and to come to Taylor. As he did, he became a beloved member of our campus community. And in characteristically Taylor fashion, he intentionally sought ways to serve other people. When this prince of Africa came to get his housing on campus, 
They asked him what were his preferences and he reportedly said, if there is a room that nobody else wants, give that to me. This selfless approach to serving others has become a hallmark of the Taylor mindset. And we memorialize his legacy and impact on campus to this day. As a result, he has continued to inspire generation after generation of the Taylor students. We bear the light of Christ to one another and in the process, God ignites our faith. This is a Christ-centered place. Second, as an educational community committed to the highest standards of academic excellence, we shine the light of Jesus Christ through our intellectual pursuits. And in the process, God illuminates our faith. At Taylor, we believe that all truth is God's truth. So when we push ourselves to advance knowledge through scholarly pursuits and academic learning, we come to understand and know God better, more fully. As students spend time reading great works of literature over in Zondervan Library, or completing science experiments over in Euler, they more deeply understand the world that God created with all its brokenness and shortcomings and its promising possibilities. As an intentional Christian community, we work hard to integrate faith and learning, not because we believe these are polar opposites, but because we believe that they are mutually reinforcing gifts of God. Just as the twin bell tower that we have here on campus reminds us every day of the shared purpose of integrating faith and learning, so also do we undertake this noble work as part of Taylor's contribution to the wider academy. So when poet and Taylor faculty member Dan Bowman writes about his own experience with autism in his amazing new work that I commend to you on the spectrum, he's helping to shine the light of Christ on a topic that actually is rarely discussed within the academy. In so doing, he shows how a Christian scholar writing with humility and transparency can help believers and non-believers alike better understand the character of God and the human condition. Or when Professor Eric Hayes in our kinesiology department inspires an entire generation to become more concerned about community health outcomes and creates opportunities for our pre-health professional students to get meaningful internship opportunities, unlike any that we would see at an institution our size. When he does that, he not only shines the light of his academic and professional training and his deep Christian faith to inspire others toward health and wellness, but he also helps us to see how Christians can actually advance the common good by building healthier communities. You know, this kind of dedication not only to Christ, but also the common good, has been true for Taylor for a long time. One of our most distinguished alumni is Harold Ockengay, who studied English and history here in the 1920s. He was extremely active on campus, playing tennis, baseball, and basketball. He was an award-winning debater. As he became a more accomplished public speaker and an even better student, the Chicago native developed a sense of calling to what the evangelical church might need in helping to serve the global church. All of this became part of his journey because Taylor does such a great job of helping equip our students with a laser-like focus of helping them to see how God could help them to become more complete servant leaders. More than any other place that I've known, Taylor is a, a student-focused university, one that is constantly asking itself, what is best for our students? And as we answer that question, we make adjustments and investments in ways that directly benefit those students who after all are the primary reason we are here. We exist to be a place that is Christ-centered and student-focused. Because that is so central to our identity, Taylor has developed sort of a legendary reputation in areas like student development, student learning, and student engagement. This bears significant fruit in the lives of our graduates. After his time on campus, Dr. Akinge went to seminary and to graduate school, eventually was named the pastor of Park Street Church located in downtown Boston, where Rebecca and I were members for 10 years. He, along with Dr. Billy Graham and the head of Sun Oil Company, a man named J. Howard Pugh, became the three major architects of what we know as modern American evangelicalism. His servant leadership first developed here at Taylor had a global impact as he founded numerous ministries and institutions that reached the global church. Not only did he help found the National Association of Evangelicals, 
whose president, Walter Kim, we have joining us here today, but also World Relief and Christianity Today, where former President Habecker serves as chairman of the board. He also served as the founding presidents of both Fuller Theological Seminary and Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary. And I've always felt a special kinship with Dr. Ockengay because he also served as the president of Gordon College and installed the bookcases that were in my office for 10 years of our former provost, now president of Gordon College, Mike Hammond. Dr. Ockengay's life was one that constantly sought to shine the light of Christ to a world in need. God used his efforts to illuminate the faith of millions. And so it is with you and with me. As we daily turn over to the Lord our lives and our studies and the work that we do here on the Taylor campus, God uses that faithful, simple act to illuminate our faith and that of many others, helping us to better understand the character of God and to show that to one another in our life together here. This is a place that is Christ-centered and student-focused. Third, we gather the light and in the process, God increases all of our faith. I've never seen a campus of Taylor size that has such a deep sense of campus culture. In this regard, we really punch above our weight. There's so many things that make the Taylor experience wonderful. But as I've gotten to know this place, I've been struck by a few essential key ingredients. First, this is a place that's focused on whole person education, wanting to not only help our students grow intellectually and spiritually, which lots of Christian colleges do, but also socially, physically, vocationally. We care about the totality of our students' lives and we invest in them deeply, both inside and outside the classroom. I think that's part of the reason why from time to time, members of our faculty or staff are asked to actually serve as bridesmen or grooms, uh, bridesmaids or groomsmen in weddings of our students. That's why our retention and graduation rates are far stronger than the data of our incoming classes would necessarily have predicted. It's why our alumni are so willing to recommend this institution to other people and, and tangibly show their support for the university by their annual giving, the rates of which are more than double the national average. But these statistics are just signposts for a much deeper reality. This is a remarkable community, deeply united around our shared mission, committed to a common purpose of being place that wants to help send out a whole new generation of servant leaders to minister to a world in need. I was drawn to Taylor in part because of the university's deep commitment to helping to develop servant leaders. Nearly two thirds of our students actively um, help lead things on campus and do an extraordinary job. Nine in 10 seniors say that they learned Christian leadership while they were here, which is much higher than what we see at peer institutions. Our faculty consistently say servant leadership development is one of our top institutional priorities. In the most recent survey, 91% of our faculty praised the university for what it was doing. We do this because we know that intentional community requires servant leadership. And if we're gonna take the light and faith of Jesus Christ to a world in need, well, we have to develop those kind of servant leadership abilities with our students while they are here. Before Rebecca and I came to Taylor, there were a number of wonderful ambassadors who represented this university in exceeding measure. Folks like Mark and Carol Taylor, who have been stalwart supporters of places like Taylor and my former institution, Gordon College, who modeled for us servant leadership over so many years. But perhaps no Taylor graduate better embodies the commitment to Christ-centered community and making a positive difference than Mary Lou Habecker, who became so dear to Rebecca and me when we joined the community of Christian College Consortium Presidents a decade ago. Now, anyone who spends any time with Mary Lou instantly appreciates her quick smile and her caring concern. And she consistently brought laughter and warmth to wherever she could be found. Beneath Mary Lou's kind persona is a woman of deep Christian faith and a remarkable leader who, along with Jean, left an indelible impression on this institution and advanced the cause of Christian higher education worldwide. I don't know what grades Mary Lou got when she was in elementary education here, all the activities she was involved with when she was living on Second West, but I know that Taylor deeply shaped her as it shapes all of us through the many gifts that result from our life together. When the light is gathered, God has a way of increasing our collective faith. 
For 175 years, Taylor University has been an institution committed to lux et fides, light and faith. I come to Taylor so honored and excited to join you in the important work you have been doing for a long time. We will bear the light of Christ to one another and God will use this to ignite our faith as we endeavor to become a place that is even more Christ-centered in the days ahead. We will shine the light of Christ through our curricular and co-curricular pursuits and through it, God will illuminate our faith individually and collectively. In so doing, he's gonna redouble our efforts to not only be Christ-centered, but also student-focused, thereby amplifying the very best things that make Taylor, Taylor. Finally, we will gather the light that each of us brings to this very special place in the middle of the cornfields as we unite our hearts and minds in building an even stronger community. The Lord will increase our faith and help us to live more fully into our calling to develop servant leaders who are prepared to minister God's love and truth to a world in need. This will occur because of our very special community. In essence, our aspiration is to become even more as a Christ-centered, student-focused community. As we work toward this noble and important aim, we bring the light of Jesus Christ and the faith that God kindles within us together to live into our distinctive calling for the next 175 years. May we prove worthy of this noble and important calling as we seek to honor the Lord in this place, in this coming season, to the glory of God. Amen. Please remain standing for the benediction and the recessional to follow. And so, God, this prayer marks the end of today's worship, but only the beginning of the journey ahead for Michael, Rebecca, and this great university. With great hope and expectation, we place in your strong hands Michael's leadership in the days and months and years to come. Would you give him extraordinary discernment as he navigates being an authentic Christian university in a cultural environment that is anything but welcoming to any Christian university? Would you give him enough victories to validate that you, Lord Christ, are leading him and this university in the way it should go? Would you give him resilience in the inevitable setbacks, great and small, that Taylor University will experience in the years to come? Will you preserve the priority of his precious wife and family, who will require him to be an attentive and loving husband and father, even as he leads this university? Give him unlimited patience and grace as he deals with issues, great and small, that will cross his desk every knowing that every professor, every staff member, every student, every alumnus, even every, every reporter is precious in your sight and deserves the love of Christ in every encounter. May his every spoken word and written word, his every decision be seasoned with the grace of the presence of your Holy Spirit. We do not ask for greatness and success, though we earnestly hope for it, but for faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ, who sees all, knows all, and will work his purpose for this great university. And now may the love of Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of God be upon Michael, the trustees, and every member of the Taylor University community here and around the globe, for the glory of God and for the building of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.